officer commanding the black detachment, the troops worked all night despite having been dismissed from duty. And throughout that night, they told each other stories of how their relatives had been sold through the very market they were demolishing. By morning, not one board was left standing, and everyone in the city knew that the old way of life was gone forever. On April 9, 1865, General Robert E. Lee surrendered to Ulysses Grant at Appomattox Courthouse. General Grant allowed all Confederate officers to keep their sidearms and all soldiers to keep their horses and mules so that they could carry out the spring planning. When Grant's men began to cheer the surrender, he instantly ordered the celebration stopped. For the rest of his life, Robert E. Lee would not tolerate a word of criticism of his former foe. While some isolated units fought on after the surrender, General Lee rejoiced that slavery had been abolished and urged every man under his command to reconcile himself with the Union. The toll of the war on the South was literally incalculable. Sherman's march alone had left a swath of ashes where towns and farms had flourished for generations. Mississippi families endured heavy losses. Nearly the entire student body of Ole Miss, 135 out of 139 young men, enlisted in Company A of the 11th Mississippi. Known as the University Graves, they suffered 100% casualties during Pickett's charge at Gettysburg. It is estimated that one in three Southern households lost at least one family member during the war. The bitterness this engendered, combined with the antagonism of the Reconstruction period, would last for generations. But some men heeded Lee's words and made the best peace they could, looking forward to a future in which the Southern states would rejoin the Union. Us two years ago, all except for Big Sam, and he stayed on until the Federals made him join the Army. I'd run off too if I'd known how hard they worked. I took this off of Daddy Hank in Sharpsburg. You weren't more than 18, 19. 